Welcome to Fireteam Chat, IGN's Destiny Show. Joining me today is CJ Gibson. What's up? Fran Mirabella. Hey, Guardians. Sean Finnegan. Please let that intro roll in naturally, because <laughs> it's so funny. And we're going to be talking about a lot of stuff on the show today. CJ did the show planning, so I don't know how to read this. <laughs> um, Perfect. First topic, we're going to talk about the TWAB, some of the major points that we got out of that. We're going to talk about the Forsaken DLC being out in September. Are people going to stick around? There's a lot of big games coming, Red Dead 2 and such. I'm excited for Redhead. And what does the next DLC Black Armory need to do to be successful? Don't forget, you can watch first on IGN.com, fireteamchat.ign.com, every Friday at 5, one day later, Saturday, on youtube.com slash fireteamchat, and your listening platform of choice. All right, everybody, let's get right into it. CJ, the TWAB this week, the meatball is going to be easier to get, <laughs> and people that get it in three runs, and people oh, that God. don't get it in 193... I don't got it yet either. I actually feel for you. So I know you yeah, guys because hate you me. got it in the third round. I have never like made fun of you. I've not like you always bring it up. Well, just let's say let's just let, I'm here, salty, here, but it's fine. Here's the caveat. That's the, how the game's the, designed. The, the caveat is the last few times there's been a conversation of like not fair a little bit. And so now you just got rewarded, you know, with the old sure. meatball mouth. Totally for context, it, so. everybody, unrelated for things. context, yeah. for yeah. context who don't watch <laughs> Fran's streams on Fireteam Chat. That's uh, everybody. He did, he did three runs, and he got the malfeasance to drop. Sure, of that Gambit. gambit. Look at his total smile. games. That his smile. total games the are reason, fewer than fifty. Yeah, we don't need to dwell on the reason they're salty. I also have all. I have all the Nightfall weapons. He's completed up the entire quest. Until I have done 193. <laughs> Steven ran 151. That particular. Week. Do you want my he review of Malfeasance then, since I've used three. it so much? Oh, <laughs> Malfeasance is tons of fun because it's got a lot in the mag, by the way, and it destroys Taken. Um, I do like the effect of when it, you know, you put five bullets in and it has this after explosion of a multi-hit effect. Um, it's a fun gun, but it's also not. You're gonna get it and be like, all right, that was fun for a while, but other than going against Taken, like whatever. But it's beautiful. So that's gun. that's what I heard, which is why I kind of stopped the chase so much. But Bungie, I like it. Bungie is not only adjusting the weapon to make it more viable against Taken, they are also making it easier to acquire or at least a reasonable grind. Yep. Uh, we heard player feedback <laughs> concerning the spawn rates of the Ascendant Primeval Servitor, and we are making adjustments to how frequently it will appear during week three of the curse cycle, also known as a full curse week. Just the Ascendant Primeval away. Servitor will have almost <laughs> the same chance to spawn as any other primeval rate. on the third Full curse week. Do I have amnesia? Like, do I have amnesia? Dude, they're giving it away. Let's just talk about real quick what <laughs> last week's episode was without dwelling too much into it. I think most people like the debate format. That was great. But uh -huh. Fran was talking about fair in a lot of the last few episodes. Wasn't about fair. And now when the shoe is on the other foot, see, my, my, my. This is the problem. How I'm now cast as is. this whiny baby. And I'm like, I hey, just wanted to rant that on your day. own. Wasn't about you did fair. did that on your own. Wasn't about fair. It was about power per hour. I will say this. Now. You you TM'd it. You trademarked it. Uh, there was like 1,400 comments on yeah. the last episode. Fun episode. It was a good episode. They're really nice. Um, yeah, and <laughs> I got to be taller than Fran. I'm adjusting. Oh, uh, there you video go. No, but it was um, it was interesting. I mean, did you guys like the debate format? Just I liked quick. it. Yeah, I like debate yeah, shows just fun. in general. I love arguing. I, about I, I mean, I did mention like I was put on the side with Andrew. She had a bunch of points that I wasn't on the same side. The way it was right, like right. we did the best we could to have two sides of the table. But I was like, again, I clarified. Three sided it. debate. Well, yeah, well, I clarified it was like, the middle it was of the episode. Team babies and team. Yeah. Oh. Like, <laughs> <laughs> That's the point. Oh, this, this, that debate got put very much in like, is it too hard? I had to repeat a thousand times. It's not about that, but um, yeah. I've been over. I'm really enjoying it. I love Malfeasance, man. You guys yeah. should try it out. Yeah. Oh man. I mean, so look for, look for Team Elitist over on exactly. IG.com. We'll be selling those. Hey man, there I is. had a team of students. Uh, one guy's a police officer. They have full oh, and I got listen. malfeasance, okay? <laughs> so get good, wow, Destin. Get there out there and grind it. I'm just oh, kidding. So I've been waiting to do that here. on the show. Oh, I've done it numerous uh, times. That was not his team. His team included <laughs> included one of the top 10 so most gambit runs in the history of Forsaken. What are you talking about? One of your crew members is in has the run, top 10 list. Has run it like a thousand times. Oh, really? Who was yeah. that? I, uh, I think it was uh, Mountain. Not wow. that that matters. Right? I don't think great. he was on my team. Whatever. Anyway. Anywho. It was Mountain uh, Click, I, right? It, getting, yeah. 
Uh, I think so. But anyway, those guys are way up there. Probably yeah. getting off topic. Actually, I do agree. After hearing how bad the grind was for some people, that it should be better. But I was surprised that for the third week, they're just gonna like give it away now. I don't. I mean, right? You're only gonna have to play three or four games, and you're probably gonna get well, the quest. It's still drop. RNG a little bit. So I mean, it depends on how it works. I, I now I don't mind it. And again, it seems a bit much. I don't know. To me, it's like I was listening to the comments, and I didn't get a chance to really say what I thought of the DLC. I actually really enjoy it overall. All these grindy things and difficult things, this is not a problem for me. To me, this is a really, really good thing. And again, we've on the show been asking for that for a long, long time. Yeah, so You know, Siege. Uh, it's really weird to like you know sit here and go, hey, this grind, good. I want a reason to play Gambit. So I, I don't want them to give it away. Yeah, I don't want them to give it away. Yeah, I, I, like I, don't, I am curious. I don't, I don't mind grinding for it or whatever. So like when it drops, it'll be very exciting and like an impactful moment. Yeah. And I hope that's not reduced by the drop rate increase. It seems like it's going to be a dramatic increase. Is, I mean, I ran does, 100, 191 runs, yeah. never saw the meatball. It does seem like it's it does seem like it's a little bit of an over yeah. like compensation. <laughs> we'll see. You know? We don't know, right? But we I mean, you still have to fight for it by the way. I think do. that's probably the factor they're also accounting for. Yeah, but this is the crazy thing. I mean, we we had a lot of these conversations already and now it's like I think that um, Bunchy's actually doing an amazing job at hearing the feedback and implementing it like almost instantly. This is very, okay. yes. very well, like, rare. Isn't that on some level dangerous? But because not that, all feedback to me is valid. But right? this well, is what I've one. been saying. Hang on. I've been saying this, though, for the last six months. Like, I think everybody wanted Destiny Year One to evolve at a much faster pace. Yeah. And I had like basically, like, sometimes felt like I was on an island. I was like, well, hang on. If they change it too quickly, there's some negative impacts to that. As well too and i think this is some of it like i did not get Hawkmoon all year one hawk moon got nerfed but that took a year now they're yeah. giving away malfeasance yeah potentially week three they're moving at something cj abroad has jumped to conclusions matt this is one thing that they're addressing <laughs> they're not changing no. the game. and for example okay if you look at the raid they are sticking to their guns and they're like we wanted to release the raid are. in the most difficult way possible yeah we're not going to be doing a prestige version this is the raid we yeah this is so as you felt as it's going to be, but you and feel really that's like good. That. Yeah. yeah. Now, I imagine there's another side of it too. But all I'm saying is, like, I'm glad that I'm fine with how hard the <laughs> exactly. is actually. It's now easier because I'm a higher right. Level. But yeah. that so that was my only thing that I was on the sidelines listening to. Me, there was this conversation about gatekeeping, and then yeah, like the week one entrance. To me, that is what the progression climb is. Power did not matter all year one, and power was a very big deal in like Destiny one. Level 29 to 30, Vault of Glass, yeah. huge difference. Mm -hmm. Broda, same thing, two points, huge difference. Now, big difference. It's cool now to see people at 600, and I'm only like 565. Like, yeah. I, I actually like that. And the fact that now the raid, I think some people are beating it. I think Giggs just did like the last wish thing, and he activated some thing where if you die, you go to orbit. People are beating it mm -hmm. in 35 minutes now. Yeah, mm -hmm. I really, That's I really, normal for raids. I didn't bring it up on the debate episode, but I really don't like this term gatekeeping when it's applied to things that take skill <laughs> because it has a negative connotation where people who uh, have access to something or have the, skill level to do something uh, are keeping it for themselves from people who want to uh, experience something and that has that has a bad connotation trials is the best example that you come up with usually right? well, yeah like there's yeah. other examples of this in destiny but like just in general I think the term gatekeeping has a negative connotation and I don't think that's an accurate depiction of what people who were doing the raid or doing other activities that take skill in destiny like trials do you know I don't think yeah. it's a matter of keeping an event for ourselves that other people don't deserve uh uh, a shot at but like when it's applied to skill like if it requires a certain level of skill to get in that's not gatekeeping like the NBA is not gate kept from me so let me ask I just you, suck what, what like you, I can't play basketball as what well about as the Malfeasance quest which just doesn't drop for some people so that's I think a different thing because I don't think whether or not it spawns in your match is a matter of your own performance as a team or as yeah. an individual that is specifically RNG so the feedback that the drop rate is too low that might be valid feedback. Mm -hmm. Is there implementation of bringing, like, you know, making it so that the the dude can spawn just as much as the other primevals? Is that too much? Uh, we'll have to Maybe. Fall, right? yeah, yeah, we'll see. Fall. And that's why I was saying, potentially, this is an overreaction. I don't know if it is. We'll have to, like you guys said, we'll have to see. Yeah. Yeah. But... Credit to Bungie for listening to the feedback that's out there and imp implementing it quickly. Yes. All I'm saying is let's exercise caution because yeah. not all that feedback is equivalent in my perspective. I'll just say this. When the grind, and I've heard people talk about this with Escalation Protocol where they do 200 runs and they don't get the shotgun. Me. And like I did 191 runs of Gambit. 
never saw the meatball. Maybe it just started in week three. Escalation protocol. So I can only count like the 75 of those runs or something. Just to interrupt really quickly, I did escalation protocol once and got it on my first try. Oh, well, they've dude. changed it. And that's, the sniper. I got the shotgun and the sniper oh. on the so, same. Oh. Another change that they're making, another change they're making, uh, like they did with escalation protocol, is the more you get it, the more your chances increase at getting the drop. Yeah. Right? So Fran, they're also changing the nightfall. Or nightfall, right? yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So why don't you tell us what they're doing? Oh, yeah. Well, I just Basically what I just said. Right here. Right? Yeah. I like the quote. Where is it, CJ? You got so many highlights on here. Okay. Yeah. The two. chance for a nightfall unique reward to drop will increase each time a nightfall is completed without said unique drop. So, nice. like, as an example, I know people chase Silicon Aroma or DFA yeah. in um, the previous. DFA is um, this week? Yeah, Destiny 2 Year 1. And so there you go. Okay, DFA is out there this week. I know a lot of people are always asking me, what's he using? Duty Bound's another one. But yeah, the point is, as you grind, you now have a better chance. As you're not getting it, it increases. I hadn't remembered the last time they did this. Destiny. It was EP escalation. Oh, this is actually, escalation protocol. This is a really good implementation been, of it. Yeah, yeah it's been My very rare. My question is, why wouldn't they do that for Gambit with the uh, Servitor? That's the first with thing the I said. Yeah. yeah, was why not like well dial it down a little, but then do that. That was my first thought too. Why not do that instead? Yeah. Um, I think that would be a better way to do it. You still like, have to fight for it, though. I don't want it to be diminished when I actually get things spawned. Yeah, and I don't think moment. anyone wants get, it to be diminished. Yeah. Like, Currently. how excited are you when you oh, get it? Crazy. But remember, yeah, right? for, for Gambit, it's a group know activity. What it was yet. So, <laughs> what? Yeah, I didn't know it. <laughs> the meatball. Like, oh, what's that? I guess I'll show you. I was boss. playing Gambit to get it. I just, like, I the was weird, amazed. Yeah, for one time. The weird thing about it is that, uh, yeah, there's still, this weird drop. there's still a possibility, <laughs> yeah, if you're going in just to play Gambit to get it, that you actually might see it and then lose. Okay, yes, but but that's hard. Right. But, but, that, then it, ugh, but then it kills. does become a matter of skill. Like, yes. if you're presented oh, yeah. with the opportunity, like, you, you better be better on the ball. You better be ready. Yeah, We were in that situation. It was still close. Anyway, back to what you just said, just remember it's a group activity so what would it defer to the person who hasn't gotten it the most mm-hmm. there's probably some factors like well that. you know right. maybe find a balance between them yeah. like you average the team's runs as a total and then like mm-hmm. I don't know, yeah potentially no, sure. if you've done a few runs and you're with a person who's done a lot of runs you get the benefit from having maybe been balanced in on I, the equation with their runs i don't know how it yeah. works I, but I don't know. It just seems like a better implementation than giving it away. I, I'm actually, I, I wanted to present something else on that topic. Uh, anyway, the Nightfall unique stuff is awesome. I think it'll be really cool to see because I know people actually have had a lot of trouble with the Nightfall weapons. Yeah. But yeah. back to Malfeasance, a fast question for you guys. Do you think there's any marketing factor at play with stuff like this? Of like, man, exotics are so tough. You've got players who come in, they buy the game, and there is this worry of when you drop the raid, when you give away mm. stuff that if I haven't gotten a new weapon, you're like, I've already played Destiny 2, and I tried it again. I haven't even got anything. I'm out that they might want to give some stuff away. Uh, I don't you think, think it's a fact? marketing thing. I think with Malfeasance specifically, like, I just stopped grinding because I'm like, I'm not going to get it. I'm not going to chase it anymore. Like, I'm just like, all right, like, RNG, you win. Like, <laughs> the gun's not that good from what I've heard. The gun's not that <laughs> classic good from what you heard. It. And then, like, then I got Feels super busy this week. Like, I'm yeah. trying to move into an apartment, and I have midterms on Whoa, Tuesday for you, my one class. You have a life outside of Destiny. Yeah, and you that know is Wait, not so Destin, allowed. Let me back up. I thought we you don't think Bungie that. should balance for your moving into your <laughs> oh apartment? Oh, my God. No, I do not. <laughs> well, my favorite. Okay, I just like, wanted to get that on the record. Because, <laughs> he gave up because he played 200 runs. Yeah, so like uh, after 200, scared. if it doesn't drop, like, I'm like, I feel like they're going to fix this. And then they come out this week and they're adjusting because I mean, the they're really is, good at hearing fan feedback. And if I do 200 runs, there's people out there that did 300 runs and never yeah. got it to drop. I'm that yeah. guy who's like, I don't know if 200 runs is all that bad. Like, yeah, it's a grind. Yeah, no, I'm like, not Yeah, but like, I'm not going to actively try and chase it in that one week. exactly. Like, I'll just play. And I'm just like, oh, I'll just play casually yeah. and get yeah, it. Yeah, like I'll get it when I get it. But, yeah. but that's the reason. Something like that. That's what I liked. And like I said, I chased Hawkmoon for a long time. That to me is fine because you know you get it in Gambit. Like I didn't like Destiny Year One where I think it was Thorn and a couple other quests where you had to do X the amount of bounties. Kill. Yeah. Oh, well, I kind of like that. Well, no, but like you had to do so many bounties and then it would randomly drop, yeah, drop from uh, bounties. Yeah, I didn't yeah, like yeah. that, but I like the fact that if I go in and play a Gambit match, I'm presented with this opportunity meatball Mm -hmm. to to kill him and then if it happens so there's these two things it is rng but then you also have the skill-based element as well too when the moment happens you're like all right let's focus up and take him down and that's gonna be a reason for me to play gambit if i don't get the weapon and again i have terrible rng i do not have the escalation protocol shotgun i don't have any of the nightfall weapons and i've grinded those things out for weeks so going off of that if this implementation is what we think it might be which is where everyone kind of gets a pretty good shot at getting it sometime yeah uh that thing to spawn does that 
like potentially for you personally, does that limit your excitedness? Does that give you, does that, de- does that deter your reason yeah. to grind out Gambit? In a way, I think because I'm one of these guys who likes the chase. And so when I have an incentive to do it, like right now I'm playing competitive for Luna's Howl and for the Broadsword. Those are incentive-based things where I can track my progress, but I do like the fact that if I play Gambit and I know this exclusive weapon drops from it and I don't have it, I will play Gambit for that reason. I mean, I like Gambit anyways, but I think, yeah, if I got the weapon, I'd be less inclined to play yeah, Gambit. Yeah, it gets players in there. Yeah. So there is, go ahead. It's a very fast note. There's this other side to look at, though, when you look at the picture. You only get the quest drop. The quest is actually fairly long. Right. It takes you through Chattered Throne and all this stuff. Like, there's a lot of requirements after that actually is pretty hard to put together. So that's teams, cool. Depending on your power level. It's a lot of time. Yeah. So you can look at it that way, like, look, yes, okay. Like, from the description, right? You get the quest start. During this third yeah. week, the Ascendant Primeval Servitor mm-hmm. will have almost the same chance to spawn as any other Primeval. That makes it sound very, like, let's call it a, you know, 40% instead of 50% chance. It's super close, but then you got to do all this other stuff that takes hours upon hours. So you yeah. still got to earn it. Okay, so for the next segment, we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to do a rapid-fire response round where we answer a question. And that question this week is about the DLC coming out for Destiny 2 in December. Now, there's a lot of big games coming out. Red Dead, Fallout, etc., The question is, are people going to stick around for Destiny? CJ, take it away. You got 30 seconds. 30 seconds. Uh, I mean, I am going to stick around for Destiny. I think Forsaken is a very, very good DLC. Long legs, a lot of quests, Mm -hmm. a lot of good uh, implementation of the things that we've wanted in Destiny. Uh, My concern is, how are they going to bring new players in if they've missed Forsaken? I think that the price is a little bit of a barrier. Uh, There's a lot of people who are excited about the reviews being positive, so I think depending on how these next games get released and whether or not they have positive reviews will determine whether or not people maybe jump in you know, in mid-transition between those games as well, because there there are different games. Okay, Sean, what's your take? Are people going to stick around? I think mostly people are going to stick around. I personally, I just have to weigh this up on my personal sort of you know perspective here, which is like I'm not interested in Call of Duty. I will am interested in Red Dead. And I guess I'm also interested in Fallout 76, but not Battlefield. So like, there's a couple of those games that aren't going to factor into what I'm playing at that point. So really, it comes down to what is the state of Destiny at that point? Is it really good? If so, it's probably going to keep its audience. If not, then you might find a little bit of numbers dip as other big titles come out and maybe people decide to go back to their backlogs. Yep. Fran? Uh, it's a nuanced question. You know, I don't think it's reasonable to expect that uh, we'll play as much over the next few months as we did in the first three weeks, mm. right? It seems very much by design. Yeah. Uh, and in fact, I would actually say it's expected and well-timed. Like, it comes out in early September for a reason, gets ahead of all these major competitors. We know gamers are going to go off, play that stuff. Nothing wrong with it. And by the way, after they're done with that or after people get gifts in December, you know, there. guess what? There's a new DLC to come back to. So I actually think it's well-timed. I don't think you're going to lose players But I think all of us here, we're going to be playing some other games, and that's expected. Definitely. And I'm actually going to agree with Fran. Believe it or not, I think that players are going to leave naturally. And I think Bungie knows that. That's by design. They actually encourage you to play other games. Take a break. Mm -hmm. Play some other stuff. See what else is out there. And I like that. I like that we all get to try some different stuff. But I want to know what you think in the comments below. Are you going to leave Destiny and then come back? Are you just going to wait for the next major DLC drop? Let us know what you think. And check out the full episode on YouTube. YouTube.com slash fireteamchat and fireteamchat.ign.com. That's what we call a breakout in the middle of the show, everybody. (laughs) Well done. So it's well designed. The IGN audience can get on board if they want to. Uh, And now we can discuss a little bit further. What I think that's fine. I think basically we said everything we need to in the last 30 seconds because... That's always what happens, right, CJ? Yeah, I mean, I think what's happening is now you're seeing a bunch of other games uh, that are coming out with different monetization structures as well as different features and functionality. And I think Fortnite is definitely this uh, title disruptor, which Sean Sean loves. Sean cannot stand Fortnite. But when you say you can't stand it, though, you're, you're, I think, downplaying its you know, dominance in the industry. Like right now, yeah. for, Fortnite, Fortnite, you say it's a terrible game and the reality is it's not a terrible game. You don't enjoy it maybe, but you know, it's not a terrible game. Mm-hmm. See, he really does. <laughs> like, so, Jury, so, Jury's out on this. No, but that's my point. No, so, not Fortnite, but Red Dead. I'm going to go play Red Dead for like a week straight. I'm I mean, I'm very not down playing the dominance Fallout of the also. game. Obviously yeah. it's a huge hit and a lot of people are playing it and it's making a ton of money. I'm not saying yeah. that that is not right. Over a hundred million people. That's yeah, very much a yeah, success. Obviously. Yeah. But <laughs> <Big> four <laughs> billion dollars a day. Yeah. But you know, <laughs> but you know, is no, Justin I Bieber don't the know. best musician in the world? Well, he's doing pretty You're right. good. I don't think you should correlate the amount of people playing with whether or not it's a good game. Right. But I also don't think you should just 
just condemn a game you don't like as bad. Then oh, maybe I can you're totally just like, what about, totally do that. what about it's just not I'm just for doing, me? I'm doing I it right only now. like CSGO <laughs> or whatever your Like if somebody is. said CSGO was bad, that would be yeah. wrong. And they haven't played it. Uh, I would say that they are objectively incorrect. <laughs> Yeah, and <laughs> you John could, Finnegan, ladies and gentlemen. Anyway, you where had, was this if, topic going? What anyway, yeah, sorry. I got <laughs> We're just yeah. Classic. Uh, yeah. I, I think weeds. people are going to leave, and I think they're going to come back in December. Yeah. For oh, the, Snake? Uh, hello. Oh, oh, my God. <laughs> snake. Yeah. Is that a new apartment? <laughs> um, no. <laughs> I think, yeah. Uh, now, where I was going with this is some of the functionality that's in Fortnite right now, uh, as well as its cost and, and monetization things, are, are probably some things that Destiny would like to consider. We talk about cross-play and or cross-save, two big things that are in the news right now since PlayStation decided to play nice with Fortnite. Something like that would be great for Destiny. And, I mean, I don't know if it's possible. Cross-play, you mean? Crossplay or even cross progression. Like I think the harder part about thinking about Destiny is cross play. Uh, you know, Destiny. I were talking about a little off camera. The the PS exclusives do hinder that in a way because yeah. how do you separate the content? It's mm -hmm. not exactly the same. Mm. Um, you know, but cross progression. Oh, friend, sounds like he's got maybe some ideas. Cross progression, <laughs> though, uh, it, to me that could be maybe something that's possible for Destiny. It, for Destiny, at least maybe between the PC and Xbox or PC and PlayStation weapons. Yeah. weapons, weapons would exactly, like that would be really yeah. cool if it was possible. Uh, it would so. hinder that. Well, like well, they need their Sony exclusives because of their partnership. That that's just, the yeah. issue, though. I'm just right? not sure how it would help the game. Like Which? I think it would be. F I think it would be. How would? Help oh, it? I would play with PlayStation users and Xbox. No, 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 no. Exactly. I'm, like, pro I'm yeah. talking specifically about uh, cross progression. Like, do you really see yourself? Playing sometimes on Xbox and then jumping over to PC and Absolutely. continuing. Absolutely, yeah. I think it's a pretty I, small I, audience, actually. Yeah, I, I don't that's think there's I anything thinking. wrong okay. with it. That's a pretty small audience. Like I was gonna say, like okay. I, I, think, I think it'd be excellent. Of I mean, like I said, would, I'm not saying I'm not saying it wouldn't be like a nice feature, but I'm just saying it'd be awesome. Okay, so so why is everybody meaning, so excited words, about the Fortnite news this week? Then you, because I mean, of cross play. You can right. play on Xbox and PlayStation together as one right. is the idea. For sure. Right. Um, I don't think it's implemented yet, right? So, no. But, no. but the, you know, I'm meaning saying. I was just trying to point out, and I think that's where Sean's head's at, is the priority of stuff here is just the ability to grow the player base, unify it would probably be the best word. Yes. That if I'm on PC, if I'm on whatever. But there are all these limitations, and that was, that was why I made that sound. That was the first thing right. that I had pointed out and I was stuck on. I'm like, okay, a few problems here. First of all, I've got a, you know, a strike sitting in my potential, like, rollout. Out that is not on the other platforms because I'm on PlayStation. What are you going to do about it? Yeah. It's kind of complex. Oh, by the way, 30 frames versus 60? Yeah. yeah. By the way. That's the issue. So there's like a number of complex issues, but I would start and look at... Um, you know, yeah, is there any way even just to solve PC and Xbox? Like, it's the same freaking yeah. platform there. But it is pretty complicated because... 30 frames and the exclusive maps, weapons, whatever. Yeah, I, It's yeah. not the same as Fortnite was my only thought and point. Awesome topic, but I'm like, this seems pretty unrealistic for Destiny in the next, honestly, year. Maybe with the next one they can figure it out. Yep, if probably. there is one then, you know. Yep. Oh, Destiny 3? Yeah, I don't know. I'm just saying, <laughs> usually something I, next year. I, I don't have much else to say on that topic. Does anybody else have a note they want to add? I just had a I'm side note. Out. Yeah. Sorry, you had something more pressing. Go for it. No, no, it was just the, I, I think that's the point to discuss and resolve on is do you think it is needed for the game? I, th I, I thought that's where we were going to have like the discussion. Con not whether or not you could do it or not, but is it needed? And I'll just jump in there, which Wait, is I'm what? to unify the player base with cross-play. Oh. And I think... Absolutely, yes. It's so hard to find teammates. Mm -hmm. uh, we really need a unified uh, player base because it's actually hurting the economy of the amount of people that we have to play with, the uh, potential yeah. raids, potential... I think it'd be um, a huge benefit well, to the player base. Yeah. yeah, like I actually think that there's a lot of things you could do as a result that are already kind of in the game that would benefit from that. For instance, like one of these things that Bungie introduced that everyone was asking for is guided games, right? It's still in beta. It doesn't really work all that well, but it would probably work better if you had a larger selection mm -hmm. of players to right. pull from, right? If the if guided games could pull from PC, Xbox, and PS4 at the same time, maybe it works a little bit better. Maybe then people stop whining about not having matchmaking, right? That's a feature that's already built into the game that doesn't seem to be used all that much that could yeah. benefit from that. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that would be cool. And then plus we could finally you know, figure out who really is the best between. Oh, I mean, we ever went, you know, that's where it needs uh, yes. there. <laughs> that's Everyone, where, uh, we got to do a fire uh, recap wait, rumble sometime. The here. fast recap was for the <laughs> longest time, years that, that especially CJ and Sean yes. argued that the bad players were on PlayStation where okay, we wait, were at. Uh, uh, let me, that's let's, what he would basically uh, say. Oh, let's let's rephrase. I'm not saying that you're bad if you play on PS4. All I'm saying is that the environment on Xbox is 
by and large, more competitive. Saltier. Despite all the competitive players that went to PlayStation <laughs> and are known as the most, com- like many of the most. I'm not saying there's none on Xbox. It's plenty, but it's Dude, that, that is like 10 years Despite ago. Despite that, Halo you know, it was just coincidence that some of the best players were on PlayStation. And, uh, yeah. Moving no, no. on, let's talk about Black <laughs> Armory a little bit <laughs> and not Xbox versus PlayStation. I don't stuff, know. But, uh, That's so fun, though. So the next breakout. question is, what does the next DLC Black Armory need to be successful? We do know that it's going to have a raid layer. They can Weapons. This week. It's going to have new weapons. <laughs> we already know that. Yeah. So, like, uh, what else does it need to be successful? Uh, interesting content. It would be... Of course, we always want a new enemy type. That yeah. would be great. That's probably not going to happen yeah. with this content. Yeah. Uh, what do you think, CJ? I'm in a camp that if they did almost exactly what they did for Forsaken, and I know they talked about maybe scaling down, um, you know, cinematic cutscenes and all the rest of that stuff. I'm actually really fine with the way it is now. I liked the long progression of the raid. I am nowhere near the light level cap. I've had a very busy, you know, a few weeks as well too. But I do enjoy all these little things as well as the secrets. Like we didn't talk about like Shattered Throne a whole lot, these ascendant challenges and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Forsaken's got some really, really cool content. If they took a lot of that content and put that into Black Armory with more weapons and all that stuff, I'm game. I don't. I don't need a huge cinematic cutscene ty- style game again. Like, I, I still think of the cutscenes and all the stuff that was in Forsaken. It was really, really good. But again, we can't play through it again. Mm-hmm. It kind of comes up randomly in the daily events. So. I don't really care if they actually focus on that again for this next for, DLC. For me, as long as they have enough interesting content to partake in, like right now, man, they have this excellent cadence, like even the three-week looping cycle. Yes. That story is continuing to evolve, even though it's a reset every yeah. week. I, I love stuff like that. And, and like Shattered Throne, little secret areas that you can find, stuff like that is the lifeblood of destiny. Yeah, and I mean, it was interesting, Fran. That was one of those things I meant to ask you, maybe get a follow-up here this time. You'd mentioned feel like the feeling a little bit out of even that content, or maybe that was some of the gatekeeping conversation. Like, I don't feel like that about that content where, you know, uh, people open up the raid, now there's these other things, or week by week, it, the, the environment changes. I actually really, really like that stuff. I think it gives you a reason to come back to destiny and oh, yeah. explore for the week and see what's out there, right? Yeah. So I don't no, know. No, I do people. like that. I think okay. it's awesome. I was just thinking, yeah, it was my whole, I felt left out. Oh. It was really okay. just again right. it was the first few dominoes to fall gotcha. when the first strike opened and then after that there was a few more things. so you like it overall though yeah absolutely maybe put okay. it most simply as i understand it because i still have to do the fourth and fifth encounter um i hope to do it this weekend um that whatever happens with riven has triggered what's going on in this three weeks who's riven i haven't gotten that far <laughs> Just tell me, is that what happened? So you trigger something, and then this three-week cycle's related to it, right? Uh, yeah. You're going to have to get there, friend. <laughs> get good, yo. So that was all. <laughs> I, I, you know, I felt like I wanted to be part of that. But um, I think it's awesome. I've just been super impressed with it. And, yeah. you know, Fortnite actually is a great game to look at on the competitive landscape. Fortnite is great. It is I, amazing. No. Out quiet. Let me just <laughs> stick to the topic at hand, heard people. My whole life. The game and the stuff that they're doing on this single map and the evolution, the way they keep changing stuff and the map has changed. This is awesome. And to see Destiny tap into a little of that. Yeah. yeah. Um, I keep pointing out the missile launch and you want to be you able know. to dress up as a bush and oh, be quiet. <laughs> you don't play drive it, around dude. in a golf cart <laughs> like yes, hundreds of millions enjoy. of players will do. So you know, sorry that you're not one of the hundred million. That like enjoy fly. the game. I'm not. Sean. I'm not that must mean that they. All suck. Uh, you can't John doesn't see them. Like fun. It's okay. Anyway, so uh, yeah. whether or not there's a lot of people that don't like Fortnite, I, I understand. Oh, you can emote this. I can't stand this game. <laughs> Give me just Destiny let me the make room. the point, which is I do think the evolving stuff is really cool. And if you look at something like the missile launch, Destin and Fortnite, neat. and some of the stuff they've done with the cube moving around, could yeah. you imagine? I've brought it up in the show that, like, imagine being in the Dreaming City and all of a sudden it's just like. And like the tower like crumbles and cracks right, open, yeah. and you were there for this one time event. Mm-hmm. So stuff like that, I'm super excited to see Wait, in the future. Yeah. But if I paid to be part of that, shouldn't I deserve it? Oh. What if I was out, you know, <laughs> like that is moving a into a new apartment? Troll. Right yes, now. I Suddenly, think they, they should give you enough of a heads that's up. That's gate yes. kept from me. <laughs> like <laughs> just really off topic all the time. So it's you I in just, the comments. Like I just that. see yeah. some backwardsness in this thought process. Oh, I, mean, I like. I like. I'm not even the, talking about. I'm not that. talking about you specifically. Just stick to the. Do you think it would be cool or not? <laughs> yeah, I mean, absolutely. I'm Bungie. Cool. I just tweeted two weeks before it's going to happen. Now is it cool? Yeah, I mean, okay, it's never cool, mind the gatekeeper. But, but it's cool. <laughs> <laughs> but it is it is interesting to hear how the the communication of it happening. Like if there was something that you knew about far enough in advance, where because a lot like a lot of stuff you're saying, you, you, those you, are you, real you, time events. Yeah, those are real time events. Like you're waking up and you're seeing these things, but you don't actually see it happen. It's in a cutscene. Yeah, to have like a real time global event to say, hey, maybe everybody should be in the Dreaming City, you know, eleven o'clock on this date right. for something and they, cool. And again, that's future. They stuff. don't I, do that in Fortnite, and I actually like that. Right? Yeah, now. yeah. 
I do like what's there was the main point, which is the, it was cool to be in the dream seat, be like, wait, was this in here before? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And like, that was uh, cool. and actually the ascendant challenges, just the way so those were. I so, literally thought based on previous destinies, there'd be like one ascendant challenge. So Black thing. Armory, all yeah. you need is massive, massive levolutions that totally revamp no, the dreaming a, city and <laughs> we got to sort it. Yeah. I didn't even get to say what I wanted. So what, what does it need to be successful? Now I've already been talking for five minutes straight. So my Sean, quick thing was, <laughs> uh, actually, I think they need to do, it's in the parallel with this, but the Shattered Throne stuff was awesome. Cool, right? I think they need something like Shattered Throne that is tied to a major kind of like malfeasance thing. A couple yeah. quest things like that would be plenty. Again, this is 29 bucks for multiple months of content to come through the summer. Uh, I would actually look at, like, just imagine that there's like this story that kicks off of like, we need Fatebringer guard and we need it back. I'm sending you back to the vault. Yeah. And like there's this shattered throne vault thing that you go Ooh. back to do. Just like that plus a couple other things, I'd be pretty happy. Yeah. And then kick off a bit of a new cycle thing um, to something like that. Oh, it came out and it's exotic this time. So I was yeah. going to, I did have a question like before we get to my answer. Contextually, like where does this sit in terms of like size and scope and price? Do we know? That's that always, yeah. to but me, it, that's the question always. Like right? is this a like, curse of Osiris? No, House of Wolves. House, okay. Well, we, well, wait, well, though, we, we don't know, though. Or but Curse of Osiris, <laughs> or whatever. Like, yeah, that's what we we're don't know expecting. what's in it, but we do know this. It is 30 bucks, right? Twenty nine ninety nine. dollars 99 So it was so. 40 bucks for Forsaken if it you already ran, owned. It, it might actually be thirty nine ninety nine Because you, you have to buy them all together. Yeah. You can't just buy one. No, it was 70 But anyway, right. roughly 30 bucks. It was. I just yeah, was so, looking at the price of. So wait, Forsaken plus the annual pass, which goes through next summer, right, was about 30 bucks. And there's multiple pieces in there. Okay, yeah. So I mean, like, I just try and get a sense of how big it is to temper my own expectations, but like I go with something simple. Like I'm that guy who likes uh, a great cinematic campaign and a cool story, but I think like in terms of long term success, I would love to see it launch with a couple new strikes, maybe like yeah. three or four new strikes. New strikes would be cool. New I love strikes. Couple like new strike weapons. Yeah, yeah, a couple new strike weapons. Just something like I know that for a lot of people I know in Destiny, uh, grinding out strikes and just chatting and shooting the breeze with your friends and just killing stuff Thank is you, a lot of fun. <laughs> and I always kind of lamented the fact that I thought I perceived strikes to be this really great opportunity for Bungie to expand the lore and do some storytelling at the same time but give the players an event or an activity that they like to do over and over and over again it's like a great balance of the two here's so what, yeah maybe four new strikes would be awesome here's what not to do don't make anything like osiris ever again don't give us <laughs> one small area that you have to run around on with like nothing really to see and then like the the tree of process what's it called yeah probabilities yeah the probabilities yeah. tree or whatever and then the area you where infinite you, forest infinite forest oh that's so the good. probabilities um, tree. No. yeah he's talking about <laughs> the, the probability tree. Like the, the, the tree of yeah, problems yeah. Infinite, yeah, yeah. <laughs> infinite uh, forest but curse yeah. of Osiris the had a lot of more stuff it was just uninteresting it was yeah. largely uninteresting really as long funny. as you have stuff for people to do lost sectors have interesting things happen in the lost sectors yeah. give me a reason to be exploring these new areas and new mm-hmm. things happen in them i always said like just make stuff happen with that gameplay mechanic because yeah. it's still not fully realized. Like one of the coolest things about Dreaming City is that one, it's an awesome space that's big and there's a lot of secrets Beautiful. in it and it's beautifully designed. Yeah. All of that is true about it. But like one of the things I like personally is that everything about it hints at a greater sense of story in the lore. Like I'm really interested yes. in how all this got built and mm-hmm. what role it played in sort of awake, awoken yeah, society. Mara's grand design and yeah, like, stuff going on. I'm really interested to figure out all that stuff and I hope that, that it plays out over time. If if Black Armory can do something similar, I think that would be really interesting for the long term. Yeah. yeah. I mean, sorry, you go Just ahead. Just yeah. I know you're super nervous. $40 okay. for Forsaken. Thirty dollars for the annual pass. It's seventy bucks for both together. Forty bucks for for second. Yeah. Then so do you need Destiny so, Two and Warmind as well? Well, that's with $70. that part, they that that collection's not available yet because the annual pass isn't available right. for that yet. Yeah. Yeah. So a lot of people mm-hmm. are really confused mm-hmm. about the pricing. There's, I think the marketing. It's about thirty bad, bucks is the point. But it, it's, it's seventy dollars yeah. for everything Forsaken, and if you want the annual pass, it's. 80, yeah, with, with Des, uh, what CJ was pointing out is that the whole that you had to buy Destiny two and all. We've been over it, but basically the yeah. point is it's about a thirty dollar value. Yeah. We know that that takes us through the summer. They've yeah. outlined those things, uh, Penumbra and all that that are yeah. coming. So this is only one piece of it, and yeah, like that's how I look at it. I would assume it's about ten dollars of the value in the Destiny world. I would hope that based on that we get. What kind of what we've seen, like some map drops and all that stuff. It's a different approach. Yeah. It's weird, man. The it fact is. that it's only thirty bucks, right? That takes us yeah. all the way through is a lot cheaper than what we've seen. But it seemed to me that's what they were addressing. There was so much expectation yeah. for these. I think they were what, like twenty, thirty bucks each before. Yeah, and there are two of those or whatever. And so they're getting away they're 20, from that. Yeah. 
gives them a little more flexibility to grow the world and, and also props to how they continue to support Destiny 2 without those additions. So yeah. I can't wait to see what that is. We got to wrap it up. CJ, you got last point. Uh, well, just two things real oh. quick. Uh, yeah, the UI. I mean, to me, like when you're playing the game right now, isn't it cool to have like the UI tab where you can go through and see your gear, you can see lore, you can see items, yeah, you can yeah. see All collections. The collection stuff. It's very nice. I mean, that in and of itself, like... That if that and Gambit had been there for Destiny Year One, like even those things, like what a difference I think Year One would have been. Like we always talked about it being a collection game, and for the most part, tabbing through those things, the fact that they're there, it's hugely helpful. Like to me, it's just like you don't need to go to an external website; you just like log in, just being able to like pull things from your vault and stuff like that. Super cool. Um, again, uh, the last debate episode was pretty good. Wanted to give a shout out to a couple of the uh, the funny and good comments real quick. Um, overall, I think people for the most part sided with Fran and Andrea in a sense that they related but did not agree with. Yeah, so, I didn't think many people sided with or, us. Or not say. sided, but yeah, like, like uh, they understood, sympathized and they were like, felt no, in the same, fine. In the same yeah. yeah vein. But then for the most part, there was like, you know, a majority of the comments basically agreeing with Destin and Sean. Um, and a couple of them here were basically just uh, saying, um, you know, mentally sometimes like, the right side of the, the table, if we had to divide it up, that's potentially what, again, got Destiny 1 year one, maybe to the place. And people are nervous to go back to that with Destiny 2 Forsaking being really good right now. Oh, yeah. Uh, and I think that's valid. Uh, one of them, I think, that was the best comment we'll give a shout out to, Ryan Van Dyke. Did Destin really just say, going out with my girlfriend is a problem that I have to deal with, Nick Bungie? <laughs> <laughs> That was actually pretty good. It was it was Thank a funny Thank God she doesn't watch this. <laughs> it's a funny moment where you're trying to say that is my problem if I have to go out with my girlfriend. But uh, and I was like, that was pretty good. I didn't um, catch that. That's brilliant. Yeah, there was a couple of the people uh, again want to give a shout out to Corey Lyons music, uh, old boy starter, Tyler Miller. Uh, really positive in the chat a lot week after week. I see a lot of those guys. Um, and again, um, I want to also give one more shout out to uh, Ryan Barker, who basically has been kind of, he's a guy that I've been seeing commenting a lot. Uh, he was saying basically to highlight, I think everyone really, everybody won in this discussion because there were several points, regardless of which side that you were on, uh, that actually are really good. So even just being able to have a civil, cordial discussion, even if you don't agree, I think the biggest challenge when you try to have these debates like this is, yeah, it's difficult because you want to paint somebody into a category. Hardcore elitist yeah casual and <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and that and that's the thing you know accurate. the the issue is that like destiny i think as a game mode for the most part for me like we said we've met a lot of real friends and real people and it is a good game i still don't know how many times i've played other games and i don't meet those people in real life yeah. i just grinded like for you know four hours of comp last night and started talking with two random people and we played in one and now we actually are communicating back and forth I don't know that that happens with any other yeah. game. So the friend game is strong. Friend game's real. That's the anyway, real was right. That's the, the highlight. Game. <laughs> <laughs> was right. Anything Anyways, else, no, nah, it was it, man. It was it was a fun episode. I was right. I was in the middle of the uh, the crew moderating dad mode. Well, I will say this. Uh, thank you to everybody who wrote. It was tons of comments, yeah. lots of views. I'm glad you guys enjoyed the format. And uh, maybe we'll bring it back sometimes, yeah. but not all the time. Yeah. All right. Well, that is it for this episode, everybody. There's nothing else to talk about. So until next time, Guardians, Guardians out. out. There is lots more to talk about. <laughs> it's like, what are you talking it. about? Fair, fair. Thank you so much for engaging in the chat. And make sure you keep it locked right here for more Destiny-related content where I am always right and Destin is always wrong. What? That! <laughs>